Mockumentary is an ugly word, a lazy shorthand for a comedy in the style of a documentary. Yes, they can be ugly and lazy, at least when they are made badly. Ooh, you're hard, showing off. That was an angry quote from Tom Kingsley's 2017 article in everyone's favourite mouthpiece for the poor, The Guardian. And gaslight moment here, Kingsley is actually defending the mockumentary, making the acute observation that when made badly, they are bad. So, thank you. He is responding to a very critical article from Vice that seems to be sticking its nose up at certain uses of the mockumentary. Whilst I understand arguments that are suggesting elements of UK comedy shows, and good comedy shows by the way, can be slightly repetitive in terms of performance and character mannerisms, People Just Do Nothing, for example, has a lot of Brentisms present. I don't like the idea that they're being subtly labelled as mockumentary done wrong. And I think it's actually mockumentaries across the pond that get unfairly tarred with this brush the most. People often point their fingers at shows like The Office US, Parks and Rec, and Modern Family as examples of poor mockumentary, mostly because they're more cartoonish in energy and presentation, and don't tend to restrict themselves too much to the realism often associated with doing a faux documentary. Mockumentary is often associated with cinema verite, this idea of a grounded and slow-paced realism. And the reason the aforementioned shows tend to get a lot of flack is because they're just not interested in doing that. Which is fine. Modern Family isn't using its format of the mockumentary to satirise or comment on the genre it exists in. Outside of talking head interviews and occasional interactions with the camera, it doesn't even acknowledge the fact that it is a mockumentary. For them, it's just a vessel for a type of comedy that would feel out of place in a traditional television show. The reason The Office suddenly felt so weird when they began to introduce the presence of the camera crew and acknowledge that The Office would be a fictional show airing within their own universe was because that's just not what the show was ever about. In the UK version, the camera really is David Brent's worst enemy. You get the idea it's encouraging him to project a certain version of himself because he suddenly has an audience and a potential escape route from his mundane office job. In the US adaptation, I really get the impression that he would be acting like this regardless of the presence of the documentary crew, which is confirmed a few times when we revisit his past. So tell me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be married and have a hundred kids so I can have a hundred friends and no one can say no to being my friend. The UK version of The Office is often lauded as the holy grail of the mockumentary, the first of its kind to satirise reality television and find comedy from the mundaneness of reality. But I think if we're going to go down this route of finding the best example of a mockumentary that really takes advantage of its medium to create comedy and satire in ways that traditional narratives cannot, then I would direct you to a film that predates the likes of The Office, and was way ahead of its time. So today I'm going to be talking about a French film from 1992 called Man Bites Dog. A uh, quick content warning, this film has scenes of sexual assault and general unpleasantness that some people might find upsetting so uh, maybe give the rest of this video a miss. Man Bites Dog is a film directed by um, all of these uh, French names. I'm not going to try, I did not do well in my French GCSE. Centering around a film crew, played by the actual filmmakers, documenting the everyday life of Ben, a malicious serial killer who eventually manipulates the crew into becoming willing participants in the acts of murder. The film creates a sort of polysemic reality in which the audience is able to understand the established medium and archetypes of the documentary format being satirised. Take this slice of life style documentary edit in the opening, for example. You know, generally, at the beginning of the month, I pay a little factor. I wake up in the morning. Et je prends un matinier pour récolter les pensions. Ce qui me permet par la même occasion, tu vois, de, de repérer les, les vieux qui ont de l'argent. J'évite par-dessus tout, c'est les jeunes couples qui commencent, parce que ça sera plus la pauvreté.
And arguably, because of the subject matter, it works better today than it ever has. Take this scene where Ben breaks into a house and murders an entire family. The interviewer casually asking Ben if he kills many children as a young boy is suffocated to death. If Man Bites Dog was released in 2022, I would view it as a critical commentary on the media's obsession with serial killers and true crime outputs produced by the likes of Netflix, often straying into ethical grey areas and focusing way too much on the legacy of the offender whilst reducing the voice of the victims. Their identity is usually viewed purely through the story and perspective of their attacker, and Ben answering an incredibly self-indulgent question about the act of murder as it's happening whilst the young boy's voice and cries are slowly silenced by him is an absolutely brutal metaphor for this. In a similar vein to films like Nightcrawler, Man Bites Dog is acting as a criticism of what is and isn't acceptable for a filmmaker to document, and how an otherwise well-intentioned piece of media can become exploitative, and even complicit. However, unlike Nightcrawler where the audience is viewing the corrupt nature of the media news cycle from afar, it is Man Bites Dog's ability to be intertextual and embody the very nature of the media it is criticising that affords the filmmakers the ability to, arguably, deliver a much more pointed and meta form of satire, criticising the type of audiences attracted to watching the type of media that the film embodies. The film's punch is aimed squarely at the audience. Ben being aware of the camera is what motivates him to commit the murder. Look at this exchange leading up to the killings where the camera crew essentially goad him into committing another series of murders. <laughs> Je n'ai pas peur des gros, honnêtement. Hein? Non, simplement, je n'aime pas ce qui fait du bruit, moi. Je n'aime pas ce qui fait des vagues. Alors, je préfère travailler petit et que ça rapporte beaucoup. Parce que des quartiers résidentiels, j'en connais, mon vieux. Hein? Euh, quand tu veux, je peux aller. Euh... Ben, on y va, alors. Eh ben, on y va, on y va, euh, quand tu veux. Ben knows that people are watching him and that he has an expected image to maintain, and this is why he gives in to the pressure from the documentary crew. But this manipulation goes both ways. Ben isn't just manipulating the other characters throughout the duration of the film as he grooms them into partaking in his crimes, he is also misleading the audience. Ben is acutely aware of the camera, constantly referencing its presence. In one scene, we see Ben laughing hysterically during an interview before sharply cutting himself off milliseconds before the shot ends, a subtle piece of visual storytelling that suggests the way Ben presents himself on screen may be nothing more than a performance for the viewer. Even the film's English dub title, the original roughly translated as It Happened in Your Neighbourhood, contains an element of meta-context. Man Bites Dog is an established term in journalism used to describe the style of documentary and reporting present within the film, acknowledging the media's drive to find shocking and violent stories. Dog Bites Man is nothing exceptional and hence does not constitute news, but Man Bites Dog is and does. Journalists are keenly aware that they are to hunt Man Bites Dog stories. The rise in popularity of serial killer documentaries and media is indicative of the Man Bites Dog style of journalism described here. Many serial killers, just like the one in Man Bites Dog, are motivated by the stardom that accompanies their acts of murder. He is given a platform where he is able to openly talk about his crimes, a world normalised to this sort of behaviour. He loves the attention so much he even helps fund the film at one point as the filmmaker's budget runs out. André me laissait entendre tout à l'heure que vous avez quelques problèmes pour terminer le film et pour acheter de la pellicule. C'est juste nous avons Eh bien, il va, de, il va de soi que je suis prête à partager mon pellicule. Hein. Merci, je serai ravi. Je serai ravi. Merci beaucoup. Which goes to show their documentary has failed. It isn't an expose or critique of this awful man, it's just giving him exactly what he desires. Sequences like the attack of the suburban family home are reminiscent of Peeping Tom and its use of the diegetic POV shots from the attacker's perspective. Mark's camera's POV appears similar to that of a rifle scope, 
highlighting the relation of cinema to industrial weaponry. The stylistic choice of POV violence in Man Bites Dog echo these comments of industrial weaponry, and act as a similar visual metaphor for the way in which the media has become weaponized. the presence of the cameras often coercing acts of violence in order to exploit it for entertainment, a message that can be conveyed purely through the visual look of the mockumentary. As the film goes on, it seems to be purposefully challenging these sorts of audiences, asking, so uh, when are you thinking you might turn this off? as each crime and murder gets more and more grotesque. Eventually, it accumulates in a genuinely disgusting scene where Ben and the crew take part in a rape and murder on screen, the POV of the camera and filmmakers losing any sense of objectivity as they willfully participate in the crime. And uh, sidebar here, I'll be honest, this scene is what stops me from being able to recommend the film to anyone. This is what holds me back from being able to properly enjoy and revisit Man Bites Dog. And yeah, I understand that's the point, it encapsulates everything I've just been talking about, but I personally feel like this oversteps the mark and that they could have achieved the same effect without including something this objectively awful. But at the end of the day, the film achieved what it set out to do. I guess the aim of disgusting your audience to a point where they might either turn the film off or never revisit it again is slightly odd, but I can't deny it is an incredibly well-made film that uses all of the nuts and bolts of the mockumentary to deliver something that perfectly executes its thesis statement. By the end of the runtime, we are fully consumed in Ben's world. He is controlling everything that we see, at one point looking over previous footage from the film as though he's editing it, just to hammer in how what we're watching has been completely hijacked by an unreliable narrator. I don't think there is any correct way to make a mockumentary, there isn't really any such thing as mockumentary done wrong. Something like Man Bites Dog definitely has more artistic merit than The Office, and it has inspired a lot of fantastic films that have used similar techniques. The Dirties is a 2013 film directed by Matt Johnson, a film about a teenager planning a school shooting that goes one step beyond by mixing in hidden cameras and interacting with real people, showing just how easy it can be for someone to pull off something as awful as a school shooting. Matt Johnson has said that Man Bites Dog was a big inspiration for this film. We even see identical scenes in both The Dirties and his 2016 film Operation Avalanche, where the protagonist is actively editing and manipulating the footage that we have previously watched in the film. But he also talks about things like Jackass and Ali G being a big inspiration, which shows just because one is sillier and more based in comedy doesn't make it any less worthy of attention. And in the same breath, I don't think this means The Office and similar shows should be viewed as lazy or uninspired, they're just doing very different things. One should not be viewed as more valuable than the other. Would most people even know about mockumentaries if it wasn't for shows like these? I, I don't know. So there we go, I know I uh, clickbaited this a little bit, made it seem like I was going to roast The Office, but um, I just wanted the opportunity to talk about a film that really uses its genre to be challenging and provocative whilst also acknowledging that doesn't mean there is a right and wrong way to do this sort of thing. What do you think? Am I wrong? Have comedy vehicles like The Office dragged the reputation of mockumentaries through the mud? Let me know in the comments below. Alright. Thanks for watching, bye!